Hello and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we will talk about how to implement a market basket analysis in Power BI. Since this is a tutorial, you can find a link in the description of this video. And if you follow this link to my blog, you will find the desktop Power BI desktop file. You could download that and then follow along this video or practice on your own. Before we get too far into DAX and into the meat and potatoes of the analysis, let's define what a market basket actually is. Well, when you go to a store, you could you take a basket with you and then you can walk down the aisles and drop your toilet paper or your toothbrush or toothpaste or your vegetables in that basket. And then when you go to checkout, a cashier will take one item at a time, scan it, and then it all gets summed up and then you pay the total amount. What we want to do in retail business is analyze what combinations of products make sense. So if I buy milk, am I likely to buy a teller with this? If I buy a toothbrush, am I likely to buy toothpaste with it and other things? And the reason I want to know that is if I would like to implement a promotion, I'd like to know that if I discount an item, how many other items are likely customers to buy? This allows me to discount one product, but more than make up on this discount by making sure that customers are picking baskets or combinations of products that are profitable and make sense for me as a retailer. Now, I mentioned that it's very important for a retailer, but actually anybody in the value chain, so CPG companies, marketing departments, salespeople, a lot of people have their eyes in the market basket and they're trying to understand how products interact with each other and what consumer patterns we can learn by analyzing this data. Okay, now that we know what a market basket is, let us see how this model is actually set up. The first thing that I wanna do is go into my uh, model view and here you will see that I am required to have at least these two tables, a sales table that has all of the details of the sales activity and then also a product table. And the reason we need the product table because we know for products what the price and cost of product is. Let's take a look at those tables in more detail. First, this is a product table. As you can see, it's a bare bone product table. I just have a product ID, price and cost. And now we're looking at the sales table. Here you will see a transaction ID, product ID and quantity. As you can see, I am excluding a time column from this file, which you normally would have, simply because it's not relevant for the kind of analysis I'm trying to do right now. Now, this transaction ID is actually extremely important. You probably will not be able to do market basket analysis correctly unless you could figure out which products belong or were purchased at the same time. So what happens when you check out your items at the, at the cashier station, what happens is that every customer basically gets assigned a unique transaction. So if I buy one item, then, so for example, here with transaction one, you can see that only one product was purchased with AT90. And then with transaction two, you see that there is a bunch of products were purchased, all different products, and I know quantity of those products. So this column is very important because without this column, I don't know which products were grouped together in, a, in each purchase. Now, the heart of this whole thing is the way this column here is implemented. Let's take a look at this logic. Basically what's happening is I need to tag each transaction, each record with the market basket. And the idea is that each market basket could be defined by a combination of all of the product IDs that are included into this purchase. So for example, if I'm only buying one product with ID 90, the market basket for this product is just one product 90. In transaction two, I have a bunch of products participating in, so I bought a bunch of different things. So if I concatenate all of the unique product IDs, then I will get a unique signature that identifies this transaction, uh, not transaction, but this market basket. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to go through the sales table and then through all of the sales records and then figure out for each sales record, what would be the market basket that this product belongs to. And let's not forget that this product belongs to the market basket only in the context of the transaction or the trip or customer activity that occurred with that particular with that particular purchase. Let's take a look at the DAX calculation to generate that market basket ID. As you can see, the logic is not particularly difficult. All we need to do is we're going to be using our concatenate X command. And what concatenate X will do, it will go record by record 
and concatenate all of the product IDs that participate in a transaction, separating them by hyphen. Now, we don't want to do this for all records. We only want to do this for the records that participate in a current transaction. So how do we limit our scope to the current transaction? Well, we call on a filter function for all of our sales. And we're going to say that take out all of the filters from sales so we can see the entire table and then put a new filter where the transaction ID is equal to the transaction ID of the current record. We're gonna execute this code for every record in our sales table. And when we're done in our market basket column, we're gonna have a unique market basket ID for every record and every market basket. Now, once I have the market basket column populated, I also create sales cost and margin columns. And the way I do those is by looking up an appropriate cost and uh, margin information from the product table and then multiplying it by the quantity. Now, as you remember that we only are required to have two tables, sales and products, but we have three tables in this particular model. So somehow we created this market basket table. Let's take a look at the logic or DAX calculation for that. So this is the DAX to create that table. And literally all we need to do is to create a, to run a distinct function on market basket column in sales. And that's gonna start me off with this column here. Now all I need to do is add additional attributes that would make my analysis a lot more useful. So what I wanna know about each market basket is the following. What was the total sales for this market basket? What was the cost and margin? And if I add all these columns, then I can say, okay, some market baskets are more profitable than others. Another column that I've added to this model is average transaction value. And a transaction value is effectively total number of sales divided by number of unique trips or unique transactions giving the filter conditions that we have applied. The other column I've included here is frequency. And with the frequency column, I'm trying to figure out how many times did this market basket occur in my, in my data set. I've also created a test report that allows us to put the market basket situation in the context. So what's going on here, I'm plotting all of my market baskets and I color them by margin. So the lower the margin, then I'm marking it red and as margins go up, I'm coloring it in green. And then in this chart here, I'm listing all of my products and I'm doing the same thing. For every product, I'm coloring them based on their margin. So the higher the margin, then it's gonna be in green and then low margins are gonna be colored in red. So let's take a look at some of this product. So this product 38 is interesting because it's a low margin product. And if you see most of the market baskets, so when people buy this product, sometimes they'll just buy this product alone. And this is the market basket here. And sometimes they will buy this product with a bunch of other products. So we can see that uh, product 38 does not drive a lot of high profit market baskets. But if I take a look at product 202, you see that some of the market baskets in which people, customers buy this product are low margin, but it also participates in a lot of market baskets that are high margin. So if I have a good reasons to assume that if I discount product 202, it will drive people to go and buy it. And with that, people will be buying a bunch of other products that are normally go together in the market basket with this product, then I will be a little bit more inclined to discount this product because I would say, okay, I'm gonna be losing my money on 202, but because it drives all these other market baskets, it drives purchases all those other products that I'm gonna more than make up my money because people are gonna be buying more of these other products with it. So as I said, this is my V1 of the market basket analysis. In this video, I really just wanted to introduce some of the basic concepts, make the data set available so you guys can download and famili familiarize yourself with the calculations. And hopefully in the near future, I will be following up with a bunch more videos on this topic with some interesting storytelling that we could do on top of this data set. Hope this was useful.